There we are, Keith. All right, everybody. Boating Tips Live, episode 10, I believe it is. Thank you for joining us today. Captain Keith, how about it, baby? How's it going, bud? Going good. It's going good. Just, um, Mondays, you know what I mean? A little different. Sorry it had to come to an end. No more Nick and Keith power hour there at Marine Max Clearwater. We got a couple in, but it'll happen again. So a we'll little, uh, little COVID setback, but nothing we can't handle. What's new? What's new? So before we get rocking and rolling here, I wanted to remind you guys, give us a follow. <laughs> give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a subscription. Turn on those notifications. Of course, you know where to find us right here on Facebook at Marine Max Leisure and on Twitter at Marine Max, Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online. That's where, that's where all the real fans go, all, the, all those diehard Marine Max fans. And um, got a lot of good stuff coming up, don't we, Keith? Yeah, we do. Hey, Anthony, Chris, Jennifer Miller, thanks for watching, guys. See you on here. It's not showing up on the screen. If you comment, it would be easier for us to see who's here. But uh, I'm just watching it on my phone. So, yeah, man, a lot of big stuff coming up. Fourth of July weekend, going to be a busy weekend. Um, so we're going to get into, in a little bit here, the boating at night and what we should do and we shouldn't be doing out there. Yeah, well, last week's episode of alcohol and boating is obviously going to tie into that a lot. Boating at night. Boating at night while drunk is is, is a pretty bad move, I would say. Yep. Yep. Don't want to be doing that. So we've got a lot of good stuff. We're going to go over a lot of tips, a lot of little nuggets, as I like to call them. And, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you might learn something. Maybe you won't. Hope you do. So I know I usually do on these things. Hey, Ark, Lisa, Michael, Doug Edmonds. Got a bunch of people on here so far this morning or this great, afternoon. The game's all here. So thanks for, uh, thanks for joining guys. If you guys, <laughs> Hey, hey, did you see uh, what Eric and them did at the that tournament? Where they was got, it? Uh, what was it? Eric, if you comment on here, you got I know you got like first place tuna or second place tuna, and you had a swordfish too. Or, What's that team Under Armour? Uh, yeah, Caliente, Under Armour, and all that. So, yeah. Did you, so, Marine Max, one of the things I love about our different locations, Marine Max in Jacksonville, Larry up there, one of the sales guys, puts on quite a few kingfish and wahoo shootouts up there. I know they had one last weekend. I'm curious to see how that panned out. I know that there was some pretty serious fish caught. Yeah, I'm not sure which ones they were in. So, so pretty cool. So, what are, what are we talking about this week, Keith? Well, Boating at night, right? So there's some safe tips. Can you, you know, can you boat at night? Absolutely. It's probably, it can be some of the best time to go boating. It's you know, not you're not getting fried. You're not getting scorched by the sun. It's nice. It's cool out. It's quiet. Um, a lot less boat traffic. Um, you just got to go about it smart and, uh, and you can do it and just practice a little bit, right? So if you're a new boater and maybe you're not, you know, real comfortable going out at night, get on somebody else's boat that's, you know, experienced and kind of watch what they do and 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 see what see how they handle it and and what they do. But um, there's like ten or so tips. Um, one of the most important things at nighttime, right? You just want to slow down, so you can't outrun your coverage. Um, and eyes and ears, right? Those are the, the two biggest things that you can do. So go slow. You know, you go out early in the morning or we're out late at night and we're going fishing. Um, you got somebody at the helm and then all the rest of the team or the guys with you, you know, we're scanning the water and looking around and, and uh, you know, keeping an eye on everything. So turn that stereo down, listen to what's going on around you. Yeah, I just posted that article I was telling you about earlier about discoverboating.com, those 10 tips, and we'll go over those in a minute. But yeah, that's, that's absolutely a good point. I mean, have a lookout, you know what I mean? You're not, you know, you got a lot going on. You've got a lot. It's, I don't want to call it a sensory overload, but you, you've almost got kind of tunnel vision going on, whether you're fixed on your electronics, between your electronics and in the horizon, electronics, the horizon, back and forth, back and forth. It, it definitely, having an extra set of eyes is, is going to pay exponential dividends. Yep. And then, you know, going slow and the safe speed. Um, the Coast Guard defines safe speed. I wrote this down. 
is a speed that allows the operator to take proper and effective action to avoid any collisions and that will still allow the operator to stop within a safe distance that is appropriate under each and every circumstance or condition. So you're out a moonlit night, there's nobody around, you're out in open water, you probably can, you know, go a little faster. If it's no moon, it's really dark, you got, you know. Sahara so dust in the air. You know, yeah. Sahara so dust, pretty red sunrises and sunsets, right? Um, so take your time and just uh, slow down with it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, like, another thing I want to talk about is autopilot at night, too. I mean, you... Um, You've got all the time in the world in the daytime to react. You can see everything from a mile away. You can see if anything does come up that's not, you know, registering on your GPS, like a channel marker or something, like you've got time to react. You've got all the time in the world. Okay. It's going to go over there at night. That, that reaction time is cut in half. And like you're saying exactly what is a safe speed? It's, it, it's giving yourself enough time to react. You have less time to react. You're going to slow it down a little bit. Um, one, one of the things that I also wanted to talk about too is, you know, with all these little breadcrumb trails and stuff that they're going to put into or that they put into your your GPSs definitely helps a lot. If if you're going somewhere new, we talk about booting, boating new places and stuff like that. You go somewhere new, you follow that track line and stuff. It just it makes it so much easier to you. I mean, I, I've got in my phone, I've got it saved between here and Captiva. I've got it saved between here and, uh, and by here, I mean Tampa. Or I mean, I mean St. Pete between here and Tampa, just all those different places that you know yep you track, track. Tracks, are, tracks are worth their weight in gold you know just leave your tracks turned on whether you're in a high and dry you're at your lift you go to a boat ramp and you've never been there before right and you leave and you're out on the water and all of a sudden you're trying to get back everything looks different everything you know all the mangroves and where do you cut through and all that so just let the tracks run in the background the whole time so you follow that breadcrumb trail right back home. If you didn't hit anything on the way out, hopefully you're not hitting anything on the way back in. You know, you're not going to hit any markers. You still got to watch out for boats and, and other objects. So, yeah, I mean, you, so you brought it up last week. You brought up a good point where well, there's all these electronics. Now you've got your FLIR night vision. You've got your radars, which are overlaid over your GPS. Now, the best time to learn to use them is probably not the first time you're over at a new moon and it's raining and it's in the middle of the night. So, you know, it's a day like today. It's nice. Go out, middle of Bogusiega Bay, whatever, middle of Tampa Bay, St. Pete. You're not going to hit anything. And now's the time to get everything dialed in. Yep. It's funny you said in my notes here because, you know, we haven't talked or, you know, you're at home. I'm here at the store. But. You know, I've got chart plotter, I got radar, I got FLIR, I got safe speed. So under radar, the first thing I wrote down was practice, practice, practice. On a nice, bright, sunny day like this is when you need to be out on your boat, turn your radar on and practice with it. Learn how to dial it in, change the modes from, you know, harbor mode, buoy mode, you know, offshore mode. Look how things look different. Um, and then also, if you've got a heading sensor on your boat, or if you've got joystick docking and piloting, you're going to have the ability to overlay your radar on top of your chart. So the radar pings are going to be hitting those channel markers as you're going in. And you're going to zoom in really close. You'll see your boat going right along. I like to have a course over ground heading vector turned on. Um, if you go to, you know, the Marine Max boating tips, whether it's Ray Marine, Simrad or Garmin, whatever, you'll see where I go through and kind of go through my setups. Um, I've got that course over ground vector turned on. So instead of just looking at that little boat icon, you've got a course prediction line so you can line up on things. Um, but then all of a sudden you start getting a return that's not on a channel marker that's on the chart. You know, you got an object there, something you're going to slow down and, and, you know, avoid it. Good stuff. Got, got a couple Got a lot of comments, guys. Appreciate the comments. Also, if you have any of your own tips for boating at night, drop them in the comments. Who knows? Maybe we might learn something, too. John Longley, you had a kayak stolen off my morning in Cape Cod Bay last night, so I had to swim 100 yards in the dark. Terrifying LOL. Well, we got Doug Edmonds on here commenting. He's a firefighter up in Cape Cod. Doug, maybe you can help him get his kayak back. <laughs> 
So bef before we get going, Keith, let's go over to discoverboating.com night boating tips here. I don't know if you've got it yeah. or, or you looked over it, but there was some good stuff there. There was some obvious, some not so obvious. One, slow down. We already talked about that. You, know, you have less of a less of a reaction time, less time to react. Two, right. share to lookout duties. That's what we talked about earlier. Also, you, you you can get this tunnel vision going where you just you don't exactly know what you're looking at. That extra set of eyes is going to help you out a lot. Tap into your preparations list. Obviously, it helps to be prepared, especially if you know that you're going to be boating at night. I mean, there's sometimes you know you might be at the restaurant a little longer than you might have anticipated, and you're you're going to be boating at night, but if you can at least prepare for it a little bit better, always, always, always have a spotlight on board. I know that in my bag, I've got a real nice spotlight because you never know one, if the spotlight on a boat's going to work exactly, if it's going to be strong enough or if, you know, you, you just need a good backup. So <clears throat> I'd say that the best tool in my ditch bag is going to be my spotlight. Well, also though, on the be prepared stuff though, too, you know, if you've got flashlights on your boat, make sure your batteries are new or charged up on those. Um, have your life jackets out. Have your throw cushion out, ready to go. Um, I, I talk about this a lot, those little glow sticks. You can take those, tie them onto your life jackets. So if you end up falling overboard, you end up in the water at night, you've got a glow stick, stick one in your pocket. You know, even if you can't, if you don't grab a jacket in time or something like that, if you end up in the water, it's going to be a lot easier for somebody to see you. You know, you guys that fish, you know, throw them in your tackle box, you know, and you're running hard at night or early in the morning. Go ahead and just take it out and put it in your pocket. If something crazy happens, you know, somebody, they're going to be able to find you. It's everything about making yourself more visible. Yeah. And, and I always like to, I mean, you're so busy driving a boat. You're so busy on just getting everybody back safe. It's kind of, you, you always got to kind of preface it by telling everybody, hey, listen, I can't see you. I don't know where you're at. Keep that in mind when, you know, we're underway. <clears throat> because if you go over, then you might have a little different situation on your hands. Yeah. Now, tip number four, preserve your night vision. I like this one. This is something that a lot of people don't realize. So your electronics can can blind you, really. If you've got, you know, it's in Florida, the sun's really going all day and stuff like that. It is nice to shut off those lights so you know you don't you're not having a sensory overload turn that brightness down it'll help you a lot you won't be seeing stars whenever you look up into the darkness and there's actually a nice tip for that here in a second five don't use headlights or spotlights keith you know you might be able to talk about this a little bit more you've got those guys with those awesome sick light bars that'll light up the world and you know they're just cruising up and down the intercoastal just saying hey look, look at my light bar i can see just fine but you're, they're blinding everybody else and shining in the houses and stuff like that too yep those even the docking lights they're not headlights they're not for running they're just for when you're pulling into your slip or you're back onto your lift you know it'll illuminate that if you try try not to use the spotlights use them you know as sparingly as you can you know, if, if you're you're going along, you can just kind of use it to give it a quick pop, you know, to light up a channel marker or something and turn it back off. Because every time that big, bright white light comes on, you've got the rods in your eyes that have to adjust. And so your eyes dilate, then they got to get tight, then they got to redilate and open up for night vision. And then the rods got to readjust and it takes a lot of time. So that's something I need to do, too, on my on my orientations and stuff to make a point of making sure I show people how to get into their chart plotters and either dim down the back down background lighting or turn on the night mode. Um, one of our sales guys here last week was out, uh, went out to dinner with a client and uh, was in the client's boat and they were looking around and trying to find it. So they ended up having to like cover up the, the unit before they, you know, they eventually found how to go in and do it. Um, on most of your units, if you just push and release the power button, then there will be a little slider scale that comes up on there. And then you can just slide it down. Or if it's got a night mode, it's going to flip that background to red and black. And that's why on your boats, if you've got a chart light or a map light, it's red because it's not going to affect the, the way your eyes focus on night. And it's not going to, you'll be able to see a lot better. 
Yeah, I, I like this. Whaler does a great job. Aquila does too. <clears throat> There's little map lights that they'll have. That's, I mean, they're always red lights because red's a little easier on the eyes and it's not going to blind you. Yep. You got the white light if you're hanging around in the dock, you're looking stuff, you know, you're doing stuff. But then once you're underway, you're going to flip that over to the red. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of red, number six, look for the red and green. Now, this is, this kind of goes beyond your channel markers. Obviously, when you've got your spotlight out and everything like that, you're looking for your reds and your greens, red, red return. We talked about that a million times. But your red and your greens are also going to tell you a lot about incoming boats or, or a boat that you see on the horizon. It's going to tell you exactly where it's going and stuff like that and how to avoid a collision because, you know, your, your red and your green is going to indicate what side of the boat you're looking at, right? Yep. So port. So on your bow, right, you got two lights, red light and a green light. Your red light's your port light, green light's your starboard light. The easiest way to remember is left has four letters, port has four letters. Port wine is red, so your port light is red, all right? Then you're going to have a stern light on the back of the boat, or it might be up on top of your T-top. So when you're navigating at night, turn on your navigation lights. So you're going to have your red, the green on the bow, the white on top or in the back of the boat. Now, if you're out and you can see red and green lights, that boat is coming at you. The red and green lights on another boat. You need to get out of the way or avoid it however you can. Now, if you see a red light followed by a white light as it's going along, so the red lights on the bow of the other boat, followed by the white stern light, you're looking at the port side or the left side of that boat. But also that red light is telling you to stop. They're looking at your right side of your boat, which has got the green light. So they've got the green light to go. So in the daytime, you can see the boats. Daytime, you can see that boat clear as day. He's coming up on your starboard side. You're going like, like this. It works just like a four-way stop sign when you learned in driver's ed, right? So you both get to the intersection at the same time. You're going to let the car on your right go first. Same thing in a boat. So we're riding along. It's called constant bearing, decreasing range. That boat's sitting right there. We're going to have a collision. If he's on my right-hand side or she, I'm going to slow down and cut behind that boat. Nighttime, I'm looking at the port side. I'm looking at that red light telling me to stop. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, if you see a white light only, one of two things is happening. That boat's driving away from you, or when you're anchored, you have to turn on your anchor light, which is a white all around 360 degree light. So there could be a boat anchored there. So you can want to slow down. You don't want to go racing right by it, or you're going to be overtaking a boat because they might be underway. You can't see their bow lights, but you can only see their stern light. So anytime you see a white single light, it's not coming towards you. It's either anchored or driving away. Cool. Good stuff. All right, so where does that leave us? Listen, number seven, listen. Turn off the stereo and listen. You might hear foghorns, bells, and other boats approaching. Use your hearing, which may seem more acute in the dark when you can't rely on your eyes. So you see a lot of these accidents happen and stuff. I mean, I, I can probably guess that a good amount of times. You've got the you, you've got the stereo cranking. You're not really paying attention. And, you know, every little sense that you can use helps, you know, because – you're 100% dialed in on your eyes, your eyes, your eyes, your eyes. When, you know, especially in the shipping lanes in Tampa, man, I came back in Tampa the other night and it was a new moon and, and, and I was 100% relying on, on my eyes. And there's, it, it, it's intimidating. It is. I mean, I was in a 44 Aquila, but just the, like the big boats, the freighters and stuff like that, they'll, uh, they'll sneak up on you and, they, and they'll, and they'll let you know they're there too. They'll, they'll, they'll blow the horn. But that boat can't, that freighter can't stop. Our boats got what, four foot draft at the most, for the most part. Right. We don't need to be in the shipping lanes. Do not run in a ship channel. It's plenty deep off to the side. Now, if you're over in the intercoastal waterway, you're going to be with boats your size and you're going to take, you know, you're going to be going slow and picking your way through. Running out here in the open bay and the open shipping lanes, even during the daytime, don't get in there. Stay out of it. Run down the edges. You don't need to be in there. It's still going to be 30 or 40 feet deep off the side. Right. So they, uh, they can't. So when you're crossing, crossing a shipping lane, cross it. I mean, you know, 
you sit down by Egmont, right? You got all, all those boats running everywhere and then you got a freighter coming in and people are cutting all over the place. You know, make sure you give man, if you were to break down or something and that thing's coming, you go behind them. Don't be darting right in front of them. Don't be cutting from them because they're not going to be able to stop. Right. Especially when you're cutting across the bay or whatever, like when you shoot from St. Pete from O'Neill's channel to, uh, so what's it called to Anna Maria? Yeah. Hey, Benny. Vincent Archone, the man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for joining us, man. All right. Eight, trust your navigation instruments. Your eyes can play tricks on you in the dark. So your chop chart plotter is trustworthy normally. Don't suddenly decide it must be wrong. So I guess don't don't assume that it's wrong. I mean, th then again, that comes with having updates and stuff like that to constantly update your charts i know that on your phone i know we've beaten this dead horse but talking about the navionics app navionics app you can update it with a click of a button and it takes literally 30 seconds do that as much as you can so you can that way you can trust your electronics you know what i mean you you know that it's updated you can have a little bit more confidence in them and you can you know trust them back and forth yeah so so in other words with that if your eyes are telling you one thing right your depth perception is way different at night you can't see your normal landmarks and all that so you're looking at something and you swear man i'm this i'm this is what i'm looking at but then you look at your chart plotter and it's not jiving back off the throttles slow down regroup and figure it out like you said more than likely your chart plotter is going to be right i mean what are the odds of it going on the fritz right there at that particular moment in time if you know it's been you know working properly you know the whole time so just it's just confirmation oh yeah i mean how how easy can it happen when you think that this light that you've seen this market that you've seen a million times during the daytime it is suddenly you think that there it is again but you notice that something's not lining up there that's when you kind of back off and say all right let's reevaluate myself here Let's see what my electronics are telling me and kind of start over from, from step one. Hey guys, just, just, just to address the elephant in the room too. My, my computer is dinging. It is. I mean, I, I, I literally just learned the text on my MacBook and now I kind of wish I didn't do it. It's dinging at me. I can't figure out how to shut it off. The dings are me. I'm sorry. It is what it is. So that's that. Sorry. So we got a question from Vincent J. Martone. If you had to choose one over the other for night boating, FLIR or radar? Well, if you're going to have FLIR or you're going to have radar, you know, hopefully you can take them both, get them both on yeah. there, right? They do two different kind of things, basically. I mean, to an extent, they do the same thing, but they're different, right? FLIR is your thermal vision, which is going to show you markers and stuff right ahead. Your radar is going to do that as well. Your radar is also going to show you if you've got storms or other things that are, you know, going on that aren't directly in your direct sight, of, you know, of light or the view where that camera's pointed. You know, what do you think, Nick? Flare's cool. It is. I think it's a little more for short range, obviously. And FLIR is going to run off heat signatures. There, there's not much that actually there's not much FLIR can't pick up that the naked eye can. If anything, could pick up more. It's just, it's definitely more common as of right now to have radar, but I think that FLIRs you're seeing on the more and more boots, especially on, you know, smaller boots than you might've seen in the past. FLIR's cool, man. If I had to choose between the two, FLIR's definitely easier to read because, I mean, you're looking at the screen and you're basically seeing what you would see in the daytime, but as yeah. far as radar goes, also radar can pick up, you know, stuff like storms and stuff like that too and something that, it is a little bit further away, but it, it definitely takes a little more training and, you know, becoming familiar with using a radar. But I mean, like you said before, I mean, in an ideal world, you have both, but you know, it'd be a little bit strange to have to choose between the two. So the Marine Max fishing teams raising their hand for FLIR. Um, they've got a, an awesome setup on that. And they also got a good point. You know, if you're looking to go boating at night and you're unfamiliar with it and stuff, hire a captain. Let them take you out, show the ropes, you know, show you kind of what to do and, and how to do it. You know, it's a, it's a great point. Well, I mean, like you're talking about a lot, a lot of these delivery orientations that you'll do. I don't know if you turn track lines on or whatever. They at least got a good little 
basic Trap, check tracks are awesome come in and out of marine max clear water which can be a little tricky at times okay. also you know your compass it's a uh, it's always going to work right it knows where where north is and uh you know you're out in the fog your senses or nighttime right you, you can't tell north south east west but that compass is going to tell you so like running Tam tampa bay I know I've got to run basically once I get past Gandy Bridge, if I'm going to go underneath the Skyway, I'm running 204 degrees on that compass. So when I'm coming back, you're going to do the reciprocal. So here's the deal. If if you say you're heading and you're when you're running outbound or you're first taking off, if your compass is less than 180 degrees to come back in on the reciprocal course, the opposite side of it, you add 180 degrees to it. Vice versa, if it's over 180, then you're going to subtract that off. So if I'm running 204, heading down to the Skyway, when I come back in, I subtract off 180. So I'm going to run 24 degrees coming right up the bay. And that's going to be my, my line. So if my electronics goes out, it's nighttime. I just, I know that's the heading that I'm going to be watching on that compass to get me in the general area. Then you're going to be popping with a spotlight a little bit or, you know, have lookouts and, and all that. But but trust your compass. East is east. If you're out in the Gulf, you're trying to get home, put that thing on 90 degrees and you're going to run into land somewhere. Right. Yeah. Just avoid the Bermuda Triangle, I guess. Right. <laughs> Crickets. <Crickets. laughs> There you go. Good point. Next, bring along a towel. I thought that this was my nugget that I pulled out of this this little article right here. Why bring along a towel? I don't know. A nice beach towel has lots of uses at night. You can drape it over yourself to stay warm and dry. You can toss it over parts of your console to cut down on ambient onboard light, and you can use it as a wipe for a fog windshield. So, like we were talking about earlier, sometimes and. You know, if you're not quite as familiar with your electronics, you've got all those lights going on. You've got all those lights dinging, whether it's your autopilot, depth finder, multifunction unit. You can drape it over that, even if it's just you need a little bit extra dimming to do, you know, so you get that extra vision that you're looking for when it's when it's pitch black. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, those little things to have in your go bag, put a towel in there. Might come in handy at night. Yep. And number 10, dock with extra caution. Again, distances are distorted at night, so only approach a dock as fast as you're willing to hit it. Ask crew not to jump onto the dock, but rather step off calmly. When the boat is close enough, double check everyone's knots and hitches before leaving the boat unattended for a slip. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, at night, your, 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 your vision perception might be off a little bit. And you know, we always say drive slow, crash slow don't come into the dock faster than you're willing to hit it at night slow it down a little bit take your time bump in and out of gear slow yourself down so there we go josh i carry electrical tape for bright lights like on my controls and the key switch lights. so that that's an interesting point like you know there's a lot of those blue blue seas light switches or something that will light up in the rings or whatever or, you know, you'll have your little indicator lights on your trim tabs that might, you know, cut into you. So just a little electrical tape would, would, would cut that glare out a little bit. A good tip. So, thanks for the tip. You got any stories from boating at night, Keith? Any, any, anything where you were like, oh, man, it's, uh, it's dark out here? Not since I learned how to use all this fine technology and stuff, but. We're not using you know, a Stixon anymore, right? You know, back when I was a kid in high school, I spent a few nights on sandbars and stuff in places I shouldn't be in the middle of the night. But, you know, you have some warm clothing with you. You wait the tide out, right? If you run aground, put the anchor out because if you fall asleep, you don't want the tide to come in and keep pushing you up onto shore. Right, so make sure you always anchor up the boat, even if you're in a foot of water, because the tide's going to come back in, and and uh, you don't want to be getting pushed up any further. Yeah, you know, th throw your anchor too. I mean, after. nights, nights, it depends on the boat too, right? I mean, if I'm in a yacht, 
and you got all these electronics and all stuff. It's just so hard, so important. You got to dim everything down, you know, make the boat dark. So if you're doing a, a sunset cruise, right, or you're, you've got a big group on a boat coming in at night and, you know, people are partying and you're the, you know, you're the sober skipper, you're the captain, you and your mate. But they've, you know, you got lights on, you got music on and all that stuff. It's that could be more difficult if we're on a center console or a sea ray or something like that. That's got a handheld spotlight. You know, it's just it's easier. You can kind of stick your head out from behind a windshield. You don't have that glare. You know, you can pop the light real quick. Don't ever, ever, ever shine a spotlight at if you see a boat on the horizon, you know, running. You don't want to blind that blind the captain um just i mean last case scenario if they absolutely do not see you and they're coming hard you know go ahead and kind of flip it with it a little bit or, or in front of your boat to make sure that you know you're visible you know all these kingfish tournaments you know everybody's running around like crazy at king of the beach at five in the morning you got boats running every which way you know so it's it's hard to kind of keep track of everybody so Hey, what do you think of these big light bars people are putting on their boats now? You, you like them or no? They'd be all right if you're, you know, for pulling into your dock, for pulling up into the house. Um, but that's, you know, it's not really for out in the open water or going down a channel. It's It would be absolutely obnoxious. It'd be blinding for anybody that's coming at you. You know, that also it's out there trying to see. So keep the lights down to a minimum. Um but just use that spotlight as sparingly as you can. Your neighbor will thank you too. Art Hill from Rogue Marine Advisors. Thanks for joining, Art. Have you guys tried Night Track yet? Key Ports Night Track. I haven't tried it. I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Night Track. Night Track. The boats. All right. Art, you want to put a. Um, a little link in the comments there. Let's see what we're working with. Huh. So it looks like a camera. Night Track Marine is a revolutionary, revolutionarily, revolutionary. Come on, Nick. Integrated HD night vision system for boats and all makes. Well, that's pretty cool. Huh. So it's, it's probably a competition to FLIR or something then, right? I think so. Is it thermal or is it low light? Integral infrared illuminator. So I guess it goes off of low light, huh? Yeah. Huh, pretty cool. You learn something new every day. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Yeah. But also, I know we've talked about it a lot. I mean, plus, I mean, you'll see more and more augmented reality and stuff like that, you know? Augmented yeah. reality, clear cruise with that FLIR. Works really cool. What's that? The clear cruise, the augmented reality stuff with the FLIR so it'll light up any of your waypoints your channel markers anything broadcast in AIS so it'll it'll pop up on there your channel markers and, and and things like that it's all tied in with the with the FLIR so we got some videos on that too on the Marine Max YouTube channel uh, that we did with Ray Marine over there on the east coast over in Pompano um, if you check that out so it's the the clear clear cruise augmented reality the next big thing. Yeah. So what about things you should have on your boat when you know you're going to be going out and staying out there, right? Um, when we hit about, you know, like your flashlights and, and safety gear and stuff like that. But take warm clothes. You know, temperature's going to drop. You might have been swimming or, or anything. Um, but uh, even though it's hot in summertime, still take some warm clothes with you. Always bring extra socks. Bug bug spray. You know, you might be out boating around, you know, like Caladesi Island. You know, those no seams up there are fierce. So, you know, bug spray will help out a lot. What else? Extra socks, all that stuff. Towel. Now that we know. So so all that good stuff. So food, drinks, all that. Oh yeah. I mean. And that's if you plan on staying out there. Sometimes it just kind of happens, right? Yeah. So, like with this Fourth of July, it's just kind of kind of kind of depend on where you are in the country, I guess. So, um, I know like St. Pete, Tampa, the fireworks have been canceled, so there may not be as much boat traffic. 
But um, driving your boat at night and your speed, a lot of it has to do with visibility. Also, traffic density. If you got a lot of boats around you, a lot of hazards, you're going to back off and slow down as well. Um, once you're out in the open and you're running, you know, then you're going to go ahead and crank it on up. So like um, somebody up here mentioned with that FLIR, with that sunken boat, um, that would have, you know, for sure lit it up. So just uh, use your tools in your tool bag and, and uh, you know, trust your electronics but mostly just at your eyeballs and your ears. So true. So while we're on here, Keith, we, uh, we've got a pretty interesting schedule coming up next week. You and I are not going to be here. Sorry guys. Um, but we're going to be doing a little message, a little post 4th of July message. And after that, it's, it's going to get pretty interesting with everything going on. We've got a lot of guests, a lot of that, a lot of guests showing up. And then on the 13th, we've got how to prepare for a Marine max getaway with Carla Milan regional marketing manager for Marine Max. So that's going to be a good episode. Just um, kind of start getting into, into that some Marine Max, what we do as a company, um, you know, different things besides, you know, see your keys, see your boat, see you later. So, so that'll be a good one. So, and of course, to kind of give you guys some, to kind of give you guys some visibility on what we do, if you have any questions, you, you might not have been able to join us for the live video, pop them in the comments. We look at them, we look at them before we go on next week so we can get them answered for you and love the interaction. So appreciate everybody watching today, everybody, you know, dropping those questions in the comments and uh, that's what we do, that's why we do it. Keith, you got anything else to add? Say hey to Heather Mess, just jumped in as we're gonna check off, but thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, everybody had a good, have a good, great, safe fourth of july weekend uh the weather's been absolutely freaking phenomenal it's beautiful out it's been calm the water's crystal clear there's tons of fish out there go get you some um and we'll see you in two weeks there will be a best of or something coming up in lieu of our uh, uh live uh, segments we're doing here so it'll be good so keep an eye out for us on the water. Hope to see you guys out there. Stop into your local Marine Max. Actually give us a call virtual showing that whole deal. You know where to find us online if you if you miss us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And, and once again, thank you guys for watching. Keith, thank you for doing this with me. Learn something every yeah, week. Hopefully we're back together again here soon. I know. What a mess. Get you out of your house. Happy Fourth, Debbie. Thanks for signing on. And bye, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching.